Uh, today, I have a very interesting topic to discuss about spirituality. Of course, my thoughts about it as it is my own channel. Right? How to find happiness in life? Happiness, satisfaction, contentment, right? In the role of Ketu in spirituality, rather, or in astrology, I can say that. Why I want to discuss about it is, you know, like because of a one very, very particular reason. Because the Hindu Dharma, the Hindu religion is in distress, you know. The Hindu Dharma is in distress. And you know, when the distress is from the outer side, then it is something that we can face, you know. I strongly believe in a fact that you cannot convert a Hindu. Very honest with it. Though Hindus have been converted under pressure, but they will only be converted under pressure. Given a freedom, given a choice, Hindus cannot be converted. People have converted Hindus under pressure. And this is one more thing, you know, like many Westerners, many other people convert to Hinduism. And of course, uh, Hindus don't put any kind of pressure on them. Right? We belong to a religion where people come automatically. Right? But you know, what's the problem today? The problem is, there's a propaganda. There are false things. Things are not understood in a good way. There's a big damage to Hinduism. You know, this is a very, very great damage to Hinduism. And the problem is, it is being done by people who are portraying themselves as Hindus. You know, that's a very big issue. That's why I want to talk about it, you know. And specifically because, you know, I serve as an astrologer to the community, to the world at large, right? And 80% uh, of the people who come to astrology or 70% of the people who you know, want to learn astrology, have a spiritual bent of mind somewhere at some place. I will rather want to, you know, clear my fundamental, what I think about spirituality. Why I think that I should clear it? Why I think that I am eligible to talk about this particular topic is question one, you know, whenever I think anything, right? like if I have to talk about it, write about it, or do anything about it, I first ask myself that why I think I am competent enough to talk about the subject, right? That is the first question that you should ask yourself. So why I think myself that I am competent enough to talk on this particular topic, right? Why I think that? I think it because I have seen the great Indian tradition of spirituality. This is something, you know, I believe that 50, 60 percent of the people who pose themselves as spiritual, who portray themselves as spiritual, have never came across the grandeur of spirituality, I will rather say, or the depth of spirituality, I will rather say, right? But I have been someone who know about spirituality, right? Being associated uh, from big institutions, right? You know, like I have been initiated in the tradition of Ram Krishna Paramahans. You must know his name. I am initiated in the tradition of uh, Bama Kheba. And I am initiated in many other traditions also. And now, you know, the particular thing that I want to talk about, it is not dharma. Of course, it is not dharma. And many of you will say that, sir, it is not spirituality. It is karmakand. No, this is not karmakand as well. I'll be honest with you. Let's, let me come to the point. Spirituality. If I tell you that spirituality is a Western concept, you will say, sir, no, it is Indian concept. But spirituality, the word itself means believing in a spirit. 
Christianity, the Holy Spirit. So spirituality, the word itself is Christian. Right? So there is no spirituality. There is no Indian spirituality. In the Indian thought, I, I, I should use the word Hindu thought, not Sanatan. Because no religion is Sanatan. Hindu religion have also developed over centuries. Of course, see, those who don't have enough knowledge can say that it is Sanatan. It, it is eternal. But it is not. Hindu religion have also changed over time. Right? So problem is that people talk the topic that they don't know. So that's why the first question, right? Why you think that you're eligible enough to talk on the topic? Someone who sells Ayurvedic things, Ayurvedic jadi booties, Ayurvedic uh, herbs, one day suddenly finds himself competent enough to talk on spirituality, start a yoga a school somewhere in the world, then you know that, that, that becomes a problem, <laughs> that becomes a serious issue, right? So Hindu religion have also changed over time. I will not like to say that it is a Sanatan dharma. Though the dharma is Sanatan, the word Sanatan is not apt. There should be, you know, there should be another word for it. I'm still searching a word, not, not finding it. But Sanatan, it cannot be told. At most, it can be referred as a Vedic religion, the religion which comes from Veda, the thoughts of Veda, or the religion which is developed by the people who wrote Vedas. Of course, Veda is a book that is only found in Hinduism. Right? Because, you know, there is animalism. There is worship of the nature. There have been, uh, you know, there have been civilizations who have worshipped trees and we also worship trees, of, of, right? Akshay, Akshayavrit and multiple people tree, we worship multiple trees, we worship. So rather that is a Sanatan religion. Right? And it is also in Hinduism. But we cannot say that the worship of trees only in Hinduism, it is in many other world and many other religions also. So if you have, if you do a study of religion, you'll understand the particular fact that I'm talking about. However, coming back to my topic. So, you know, the Hindu religion, Hindu religion now is what I'm referring to. I will be using the word simultaneously Hindu versus Indian. So Indian dharma, Hindu dharma, Sanatan dharma. I will use the word interchangeably, of course, but I don't believe that it's Sanatan. Point one. This is a multiple things Sanatan. It have some Sanatan things. That is true. Yeah. And it is for, you know, it is for the followers. It is the one who follow my thought, who believe in my thought. You may not believe. Just quit the video right now if you don't believe in my thought. Yeah. But I will tell you, I am someone who have the first-hand experience, right? I am someone who have been living into it. I am someone who doesn't only talk. I am someone who have seen things working. You know, Ram Krishna tells a thing. He tells it to some of his disciples that the Jnana Mark, the path of knowledge is nearest. The Jnana Mark, the path of knowledge is something that one cannot follow because it is only talk. There is no rasa in it. There is no juice in it. So the path of knowledge is not recommended for people. Generally, people who follow the path of knowledge end up being dissatisfied. Bhakti mark, the path of devotion is something that is recommended because bhakti mark gives you the result also. Gyan mark is, you know, the gyan mark, the path of the gyan, the path of the knowledge is neti neti, not this, not that. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya, God is true and the world is false. That's okay, but don't you eat food? Food is in this world only. So if you think that God only is truth and the food is and everything else is false, you should stop eating food. But then there is a very good, uh, you know, uh, there is a very good philosophy who tells that but because we live in the world, we have to interact with the world. So, you know, the Gyan Mark is quite not for everyone, not, not for many people. Gyan Mark is for the high level of sadhus and uh, they are very rare to find. 80% of the sadhus even who believe in Gyan Mark don't only follow the Gyan Mark, they also follow other Markas as well. That Gyan Mark the path of knowledge, right? I have told it before as well. Right. 
So as I told, spirituality, there is no Indian spirituality because spirituality is a belief in spirit. Okay. Technical definition of spirituality is we become like the God. The spirituality. We become like the spirit or we believe in the spirit. Unfortunately, in Hindu religion, we don't have a spirit. Right? Vishnu, Sriman Maha Vishnu is not a ghost. Shiva is not a ghost. Rama is not a ghost. Krishna is not a ghost. Right? So spirituality is not the word. Adhyatma. Hindu Adhyatma. Adhya Adhya. Adhya is worship. Adhya is the main person, you know. Aradhya Adhya. Aradhya is the concentration. My wife is my Aradhya for love. My wife is my Aradhya for expression of love. Aradhya, the worship person. The one I worship, the one I contemplate on, the one I am focused on is Aradhya. The one whom I want to achieve, the one whom I want to become, the one whom I am most influenced from. Right? That is Aradhya. Aradhya Atma. When the soul is the focus, it is Aradhya. It is once again my own definition. It's how I understand it based on my experiences with people, based on my experiences with sadhus and yogis, based on the things that I have seen being a practicing astrologer. Of course, I am into a whole lot of pujas, mantras, yantras, tantras. I have met many spiritual peoples, pundits, you know, from all over the India. You know, the yogis living in the Himalayas, in the area of Kedarnath, Bhurinath, to the last village of India. Right. Right from there to the South Indian people, right? I have I have lived in Kerala for a long time. I've also known those people who are the main priest of one of the top temples in South India. I have talked a lot of, uh, have talked a lot of things about them, have discussed a lot of things, have got a whole lot of knowledge about things, right? So that's why I think I'm competent enough to talk about this topic, right? I'm certainly not a person who lives in his own mind and thinks that my own thinking is only true. Yeah. Aradhya Atma. When the soul is the Aradhya, then it is Adhya Atma. The same thing is Brahmacharya. You know, this is once again a misunderstood concept. People think Brahmacharya is celibacy. No. There have been many yogis who are married and have children. Nimgaroli Baba. Lahari Mahashe. To name a few. And Brahmacharya is a very important step in spirituality. It is a very important step of yoga. Yam, niyam, dharan, pranayam, pratyahar, brahmacharya, asatyaya, sauch. Ten yamas, ten yamas. There is a, it is in yoga. So when Lahiri Mahasaya have a child or when Nimgaroli Baba have three children, one daughter, two boys, he is not a brahmachari. He is not a celibate, sorry. He is not a celibate. Then how, see, Neem Karoli Baba is a very great spiritual saint, you know. There have been three great spiritual saints in Uttarakhand, northern part of India. One is Mahavatar Baba Ji. Another is Neem Karoli Baba. Third is Hera Khan Baba. And Hera Khan Baba is the real deal. Hera Khan Baba have lived over centuries. People believe that Hera Khan Baba gave some teachings to Arjun as well as Krishna. And Hera Khan Baba also taught a few things to Adi Sankracharya as well. But uh, unfortunately, we don't know about the real deal. We know about the YouTube ads deal. The world is changing. That's why I think it's important to talk about this particular topic you know, because the real deal is being lost. Right? So Brahmachari, the one who dwells in Brahman, the one who thinks of Brahman. Even Ramakrishna Paramahans himself have advised the married couples that you should only have a physical relationship until and unless you get one child or two child and after that you should live as a friend to your spouse. 
So brahmachari doesn't mean not having a sexual thought or not having a sexual contemplation, not having a sexual thought, not engaging sexually, not having a physical relationship. It doesn't mean that at all. It means achirana like Brahma, behaving like Brahma, brahmachari, the one who dwells in Brahma, the one who walks in Brahman is brahmachari. Now the thing is, what is Brahman? And you know what? It's a big problem. People talk spirituality. They don't know spirituality. That's, that's a big problem. You know about Bhagavad Gita, right? Have you read Bhagavad Gita? You must have. Have you understood Bhagavad Gita? It is a difficult thing. It is quite a difficult thing to understand Bhagavad Gita. Reading is easy. Talking is easy. Understanding is difficult. Right. Krishna he stops the chariot as well as time to give some advice to Arjun. And he doesn't talk about Arjun be in the world but don't interact with the world. He doesn't talk about these things. Right. He talk about two things. And these two things is my prime topic on the spirituality that, that I want to discuss today. Spirituality is a huge topic. And it cannot be covered in one video, two video, ten video, twenty video, thirty video, fifty video, hundred videos. It cannot be covered completely. It's a very big topic. And then this spirituality or adhyat is very self-centered. I will come to this topic. So according to me, Bhagavad Gita, if you try to understand it, there are two things more. There are two more things, you know, like Krishna talks to Arjun and he, he doesn't tell him that, you know, live in the moment, Arjun. Or, you know, like interact with the world, but keep your soul intact, Arjun. He doesn't talk about this particular thing, of course not. He talks of two things, you know, first of all, he tells Arjun that Arjun, you are a Chakriya. You have a duty and you should fulfill that duty. Hmm? This is something important. What texts, text of Hinduism. Once again, a word worth debating, but I am in no mood to debate extremely sorry. The word, the texts of Hinduism state at some places that those, do, those who don't have children will not get moksha and things like this. And there are three, four aspects to it. In Garud Puran, <clears throat> there is a story of a king who is very much devoted to gods and saints and he doesn't get married and he, you know, he is a king, but he wanders in the jungle in search for the god. And one day Narad, the divine messenger, comes to him to advise him that why you are not getting satisfaction or moksha because you are having the rina, you are having the depth of your pitrus. You are having the depth of your ancestors. Pitra rin, rishi rina, deva rina. There are three rinas. The depth of the god, the depth of the sages, and the depth of the ancestors. The depth of the god is that because you have given the... This is what Indians think, right? I, I don't want uh, to dabble into what Christianity thinks. Hmm? What Hinduism thinks. So there is a depth of God. He has given you many things. And you should give it back to him. By the way of worship. By the way of donation. And by the way of multiple things. Is what we know as, you know, karma. By the way of karma. Nitya karmas, nitya karmas. You should give the things back to him. This way, Nitya karma is not brushing your teeth. Nitya karma is worshipping day. Nitya karma. Then there is a Pitra Rana. What is Pitra Rana? Your grandfather <coughs> gave birth to your father for continuation of lineage. Your father gave birth to you for continuation of lineage. Now how can you decide not to continue the lineage? So this is the Pitrana. They 
produce the you for continuation of lineage and they want you to continue the lineage. So that is Patrana. And there is Rishi Rana. Rishi Rana is that Rishi gave you the knowledge about mantras, Jyotish, Ayurveda and multiple things. And why they gave you the knowledge? So that you learn the knowledge, you contemplate on the knowledge, you experience the knowledge and in this way you enhance the knowledge so that you remove what is dysfunctional. You add the new findings as per experience and enrich the knowledge. These three renas, these three depths you have. The depth of the sun, the truth, the depth of the moon, Rishi, the depth of the ascendant, Deva. Right? So the placement of the Lord of the ascendant, the placement of the Lord of the sign where moon is situated, and the placement of the Lord of the sign where sun is situated. Indicate about this thing. Sun is the lineage continuator. Sun continues the lineage. Moon is the Devata because the moon is Krishna. Krishna is the 16 Kala Avatar of Vishnu. And, and the Lagna is intelligence Rishi. Right? So keep this particular thing in mind. Sun, Pitrus, Moon, Devata, and Ascendant is Rishi. Sometimes we interchange Moon to Rishi and Lagana to Devata based on a specific combination of the horoscope that I don't wish to discuss right now. Okay. So these three runas, these three depths, you have to go through. That is the first point of it. And another thing, you know, I ask you a question. If the whole world becomes a sannyasi, what will happen? I give a very simple analogy. Sannyasi will not plant a tree. But he will eat the fruit of the tree. Sannyasi will not earn money. But he will be dependent on people. And people's money. The money of the society to live. Right? If everyone was a sannyasi in India, from day one, then believe me, there will be no roads, no institutions, no government, nothing. So, there is a saying in some text, I forgot the reference, I forgot the name. There is a saying in the text that if everyone is sannyasi, then it will become a problem for the society. So, this is what Krishna advises him. See, why we have dharma? What do you understand by dharma? The rightest thing to be done. And dharma and adhyatma is different. Dharma is the rightest thing. And dharma, the base of the dharma, although there are many subsets of dharma, but the main thing of dharma, Hindu dharma, Indian dharma, Sanatana dharma, whatever, divides the life into four sections. Brahmacharya ashram. When you are supposed to remain celibate and learn to give the Rishira, Grihastha ashram, when you are supposed to get married and have a family life, to give the Pitrana, then Vanaprastha ashram, where once again you are supposed to contemplate on the experiences that you have and the learning that you have to give the depth of the Rishis and the Devas. The ring of the devas you also give in the Grihastha Ashram by doing pujas and charity. And in the end, there is Sanyasa Ashram. So dharma is the rightest thing to do and dharma tells you that you have to go through Brahmachari Ashram, Grihastha Ashram, Vanaprastha Ashram and then Sanyasa Ashram. Don't directly jump to Sanyasa. That is not the rightest thing. That is not the dharma. This is something that needs to be understood. This is something that needs to be understood. Even Ramkrishna Paramahansa is going on the terrace of the temple and crying that why students are not coming to me. I want to share my knowledge. Oh Ma, why you are not sending students? It is becoming unbearable for me, unbearable for me to have the knowledge with me. That is the greatest of Ramkrishna. Where he have students by his side, when he have people by his side and he talks to them. He care. He take care of the students like a, like a father does. 
for people like ramkrishna the greatly elevated soul they mix all the four ashrams together but you know i have a statement i tell it in like almost every consultation if it is based on spirituality i will talk about this particular thing in every consultation whenever you see a movie you imagine yourself as hero if you read ramayana you imagine yourself as ram why not keval why not ahilya why not shabari why not bharat it is christian thought it is western thought to think that you came here to do some special karma because jesus came to sacrifice his life technically indian thought doesn't believe in that for indian thought you came here to do your karma you came here to suffer the consequences of the karma that you have done in the previous life according to me the crux of spirituality adhyatma brother the crux of it is to understand that in the story of ramayan i am kevat and my duty is to help rama cross the river and after them worship him touch his feet and live my life that is the duty understand one thing in spirit adhyatma i <laughs> suppose using the word spirituality again and again in adhyatma ego have no place ego is very detrimental for adhyat is it not ego to think that i am rama is it not ego is it not a ego to think that i am the hero of the movie not the side hero not the villain that's the problem come out of this thing you know what i i am like you know you know i know a spiritual saint from farukhabad this is the place where neem karoli baba was born he used to touch the wire of a fan or a light and by chanting gayatri mantra he used to light it wo haath se pakad ke bijli ka tar pankha jala dete and he he was very close to me he he always treated me like his child he was also a queer ascendant i am also a queer ascendant so though we both had a lot of affinity towards each other he always used to tell me that you know subham people think that they will leave ego because people try to find ego in the big things that they do but you know ego is very subtle if you say that see i have picked up the garbage today because i have no ego you have done it because it was necessary to be done if the garbage will remain there you cannot sit so that is nothing big that you have done this you have done to show yourself that see i am egoless i am without ego but this is not the real ego that is being talked about the real ego is very subtle the subtle ego to think that i should have the most beautiful girl as my girlfriend the subtle ego to think that i am the hero of the movie the subtle ego to think that i should be like ram though you should be like ram but the subtle ego of thinking that i am ram is the problem become kevat become shabari this shabari is good understand this the things are very subtle these things are that's why they are called astupash that's why it is called noose that's why it is called the chain that binds human it is very subtle it's very very subtle the moha the moha you know the attachment is not something that you say oh i left my girlfriend i was not attached to her or i left my mother i was no attached not attached to her that is not the real moha the real moha is i want to drink cold water is moha that is the attachment i want to eat good food that's the moha can you eat something that is utterly that, that is having no salt at all can you eat something that is not tasty at all jainism is one of the very advanced religion as i have heard they eat very boiled food that is not tasty 
because there is no moha there is no attachment to food you eat it to live you don't eat it to enjoy but if eating a burger from mcdonalds is your favorite thing to do then the moha is certainly working over you if you if you can categorize that this food is good and that fat that food is bad then the moha is certainly working on you the real sanyasi will never be able to differentiate between a good food and bad food because for him the attachment doesn't matter one of the person whom i met in south india told me that it is the rule of sankracharya that you know like this generally happens you know, that it becomes a, a problem with many of my students i visit their home sometimes and they give me food and like generally in honor what they do like they give me one chapati or two chapati that is hot and then you know the one who is serving is standing by my side that sir if you finish this i will give you one more and i always refuse to do it then they are like you know why I refuse to do you know why i refuse to take cuz that saint told me that you know this is a rule of sankracharya i am not very sure about is it true or not but is like parat me ek bar jitna bhojan diya jaye usse zyada nahi khana chahiye amount of food that you get in your plate is the only amount of food that you should eat if you ask for more chapati if you ask for more vegetable sabji the moha to eat the delicious food is not going out of you come on what is it even bhagavad gita will tell you eating very hot food or very cold food is both tamse so if you sit on the dining table to eat the hot rotis hot fulgas oh that's that's an issue that's a big issue and this is something that needs to be understood you know it works very subtly my friend it works very subtly i gave my phone to someone and say that i am see i am not attached to my phone so that's that's not the thing come on it's not the thing so give a phone to someone else is something very normal to give a phone to someone is very very normal then the richest person in the world will be the most moha free then the businessmen are the most moha free then the businessmen are all free of attachment because they purchase things to sell in their shop and they give it away they're not right so the secret of happiness number 1 now i'm just mixing it all the secret of happiness number 1 is not to fool yourself right these subtle things needs to be broken coming back to my point the righteous thing the dharma and you know what i strongly you know i've strongly seen this particular thing that people should understand people should understand where they stand the three runas that i talk about the rishi run why you should produce a child we in hinduism believe that we are born from a rishi as per the gotra and if no gotra then kashyap gotra now kashyap have given birth to someone he have given birth to someone he have given birth to someone he have given birth to someone in the process you are a birth so these many people have desired to have a child have desired to have a family desired to continue the lineage why you should not desire it? you cannot go against the will of these many people this is the pitrana because they are your pitrus okay. but someone can break the chain like ramakrishna paramahans he can break the chain because he is directly born from god because he is directly born from god tathagat buddh can break it gautam buddh can break it because he is directly born from god he can break it he can break it you cannot so you know this is the most important stuff 
you realize what we are and where we stand. Generally, I have seen people who are married, wishing to have a child, wishing to have money, wishing to have name, fame and power, highly desirous of switching their job. So there is a khinnata. There, there is a dissatisfaction from job. There is a desire to get, in, get money. There is a desire to have power. There is a desire to have fame. When these people talk of moksha, having no detachment, having no sense of vivek, discrimination of things. When they talk of it, I take it as a immature thing. And this is what I want to talk about. This is what I want to hint at when I say to realize yourself. And this realization can be best done using a horoscope, of course, because horoscope tells you what is in the cards for you, what is your real duty, what is the dharma, what things you can expect. For this particular reason, you know, there's a shloka. I don't remember the shloka, I will tell the translation, exact translation, that even the yogis living in the jungle are curious to know about future, know about their future. Then what to talk of normal human beings? I have been associated with many sadhus, yogis, have been initiated in many mantras, have had many spiritual experiences, but still after that I know that I have to get married and produce children because that is the karma for me. That is the thing for me. That is the path for me. Right? So you sh we should understand where we are, where we stand, what are the duties, what are the renounce. Right? This we should understand. That is the second step to happiness. This is, this is the second step to achieving happiness. This is the second step of spirituality. To realize what we are, to realize what we want and have expectations accordingly. The one who is not easily having a child populating almost every day since last four or five years in the expectations to get a child cannot desire to become a brahmachari of course not because that's not his position that's not his position you will always see spiritual people who have had wife and children get childbirth quite quickly after marriage because there is not much karma of sexuality pending for them there is no desire or need of you know, get more involved sexually with their spouses to, you know, produce the chain. Who can break the chain? That is a very pretty important question. And there are astrological combinations for it. Who can break the chain? Who can say that I will not go through these four phases of life? I will not go through these four ashrams of life. Who can break the chain? Like Buddha. Buddha can break the chain. Ramakrishna can break the chain. Who can break the chain? Who can break the chain? Can you break the chain? Who can break the chain? Today is a very special day. The day I'm when I'm making the video, though I it can be uploaded any day. But the day I'm making the video, this is a very special day. Because today who can break the chain? You know, like I will tell you, today is a very special day. One year ago today. I met a lady. And you must have noticed this particular thing. You know, when Buddha was born, before the birth of Buddha, his mother saw a white elephant in dream. Before Ramakrishna was born, before his birth, his mother saw a white elephant in dream. I met a lady. She is very close to my heart. Very close to me as well. And this has been one year. You know, that's why I'm making the video today. This is all dedicated to her.
and that's why i'm pouring everything out though it is a huge subject which cannot be poured out in one video but still the dedicated to the lady and when the lady was about to born around the time of conception her mother saw a white elephant in dream and then she was born such people can break the chain such people have the power to choose if they want to go through the four ashram of brahmachari grihastha vana prast or sanyas these people can actually do other people cannot do that's why that's what i say you know understand where you are contemplate your position and have your aspirations be it spiritual or be it normal or be it any aspiration accordingly this is the I, i forgot the number but this is the second secret of spirituality according to me and the second way of having a, having happiness you know someone who have only read up to 10th standard if he wish to become ceo of microsoft of course this will make sure that he remains unhappy throughout his life so have your expectations in any field in life or in spirituality according to what you have achieved or what you wish to do in future to the place where you stand to the things that you have good judgment and expecting things accordingly is the key there can be any special dream you know a lotus an elephant a feet of a goddess and you know in their life you will see the thing manifesting this particular lady that i'm talking about you know very close to my heart i don't think that she have ever done any religious religious penance she have not done she haven't done any religious penance uh, you know like strictly and uh, i gave her a mantra no like with very less effort like people spend their lives to get a mantra in dream people spend their lives to see gods in their dream this lady after coming in contact with me and also before coming in contact with me have seen multiple gods in, in her dream after coming in contact with me it have become very frequent she also got a mantra diksha in the dream these are all indications of what you are capable of what is destined for you and if that is not happening with us we should not be sad but we should accept the truth wholeheartedly that the time has not yet come for us right the first thing is spirituality what bhagavad gita talks about the four paths dharma artha kama moksha these four things in sanyas grihastha vanaprastha brahmacharya ashramas etc the second thing you know and th- this is pretty very important and after this i will come to the astrological aspect because uh, astrological things that i want to talk about today because <laughs> the video will be extremely long as the topic is very very big but yes i just want to give you a view of it the second thing you know what krishna talks about krishna is uh, not simply saying him that you know arjun you kill the people but don't get attached with that you are killing him of course not after killing their brothers gurus etc pandavas have to go through a lot of penance right so arjun is doing a karma and he have to then you know go through the repercussions of karma as well it's there so this is not only in hindi we call it dhakosala hmm? so this is not only mere talk mere gibberish talk you know this is not only mere dhakosala 
you live in the world but don't interact with it you are a super soul you are this you are alpha nova you are super nova you are a flying jet it's not the stuff so krishna tells him that this is what yogis do this is what these people do this is what that people do control on breath the three types of food there are three types of habit so you know this is what adhyatma is you know adhyatma aradhya at the soul is the aradhya the soul is the target and like a tree you know a tree needs a uh, needs water needs the you know the part of earth will need kya sand mati earth will need earth will need proper care to grow and the same thing is with the soul as well you know so it is all about practice what i want to talk about you start meditating It's not gonna work meditation is one of the process right if i put a cactus in a black soil and start watering it every day watering is equal to meditation it will not grow maybe it can grow i don't know what but anyways it will not grow is what i am want to talk about right so it is not just mere talk krishna is also telling him that these are the mental attributes of a satvik person that you should follow this is a mental attribute of this is the food of a satvik person that you should follow this is the mind of a satvik person you should think like this and multiple things you know what is the real spirituality for me if you are doing something and not getting a result do you think you are doing it right have you seen the paintings by great painters they will you know they will like draw four lines as per their wish and they call it a painting and people people buy it quite costly if i make four lines haphazardly on a, a paper will you buy no you will not not so just you know just having the thought that i will live in the world but will not contemplate with the world because i have picked up the garbage i have lost all i have shredded all of my ego because i left my girlfriend i am detached from the whole world this is just like making four lines on the paper like your child you know your child draw four line on a paper and you start try selling it in the international art market that how great art it is of course it's not it is not a great art in great art there is a flow of light that, that is a very deep concept but there is a flow of light you know so in the art there is a particular shape like suppose this is a photo so light comes from this area you know like sorry light comes from which this this area this this area light comes from this area and it travels this particular way from the this area to my actually screen is mirrored from this area the light is coming and it is flowing this way and going to the bed so i'm the light setting is like a like this this is the light setting in this particular frame that you can see in like like this this is the light setting this light setting have impact on how the photo will be perceived the thought that the photo will put in the mind of the one who will watch it every day and there are many finer nuances there are many finer things like this in a photo you talk to a photographer you talk to an artist do you know what multiple things i like this you know in a good photo there is something known as 60 40 ratio if the thing is you know whatever object you are clicking on the camera it should occupy the 60% and 40% can be other things if you are taking my photo i should and my body should have the 60% of the photo and only 40% should be the background otherwise it is not a good photo right the multiple things like this the same way we go into spirituality only thinking about you know that i am picking up the garbage the example that i gave you hilarious example i know that at the time picking up the garbage so i have shredded my ego is like drawing two lines on the paper and thinking that you are picasso of course you are not the spiritual practice 
comes with a lot of things, you know. All the spiritualists that I have known, be it me, Mother Oli, Baba, or anyone. Neem Karoli, Baba, Ram, Krishna, Paramahansa, Ramana Maharshi, anyone. They have followed a strict regime. What to eat, what to talk, what to avoid, how to behave. There are multiple, multiple, multiple things attached to it. So according to me, the real spirituality, it is something very complex to make you understand. You know, it is something which is very, very complex to make you understand. But still, I will try to explain it. Ramana Maharshi is talking about who am I? Self-contemplation. Serious spirituality. Hmm? Serious spirituality. The soul have three levels. Which is divided in the seven chakras. Two chakras on the first. Two chakras in the middle. Right? And three chakras in the up. This is the thing. The contemplation of who am I? The Mooladhara Chakra and the Sodhisthana Chakra is on the lower plane. The Manipur Chakra and the Anahata Chakra is on the middle plane. And the Visuddha Chakra, the Agnya Chakra and the Sahasrara Chakra is on the top plane. The contemplation of who am I can only happen in either Anahat or Manipur. And when it happens on Anahat, you can still talk, interact with the world. When you go up to the level of Anahat Chakra, it's in the heart. When you go up to the level of heart, only then you can practice. Or when you go up to the level of Manipur, only then you can practice the contemplation of who am I. Otherwise, you cannot contemplate. And to take your consciousness up to Manipur or Anahat, you have to do a lot of things. You have to do a lot of things. A particular type of food, a particular type of lifestyle, a particular type of worship, a particular type of contemplation, all these things will mix together to take you up to that extreme. I will tell you one thing. You know, the lowest chakra is Mooladhar chakra. And of course, I don't want to talk about chakras a lot right now. But Mooladhar Chakra, the earth element, Mooladhar Chakra is very much related to practicality. And all the powers of Mooladhar Chakra. And that is on the lowest part of the body. Right between the place where, you know, the hips meet. The place after which the hips bifurcate. The last part of the spinal cord. You can find a tail there because humans live in the womb of mother and there's water in the womb of mother. There's no atmosphere. So, of course, humans have tails, you know. Yeah, that's why the baby floats. However, those who are very sexually active and who often achieve sexual orgasm, you will see they will have their base chakra they will have their muladhar chakra very much activated and they will have almost all the powers that is told for muladhar chakra in either way or the other there's a certain practice that needs to be done and that's why tantra you see tantra is the functioning of tantra is the functioning of spirituality tantra is practical spirituality it is functioning and for the Kundalini sadhana, for the sadhana of Kundalini, woman, you know, Devi as mother and Bhairavi as partner is needed. Because the Muladhara will not grow. I don't want to say that there is a sexual relationship between these two people. Of course not. When you are in Tantra, you can activate chakras based on multiple other things, right? Having, having population is not the only thing that is advised, right? Even having copulation is the lowest thing that is advised. 
at having copulation the lowest lowest thing that is advised you know and if you try to rise through the lowest thing it becomes a problem it becomes a problem later on it gives birth to vikruti it gives birth to mental issues so if you try to activate your manipur chakra mooladhar chakra if you try to activate your mooladhar chakra by engaging in a whole lot of sexuality it may rise but after some time it will make you vichip it will give rise to mental aberrations it will give rise to mental challenges it, it will give rise to mental problems so that's not the right way to do this is something you know? so you cannot just start thinking that okay i will contemplate on who am i and every day you start thinking who am i and you expect that i now i have become raman maharshi or now i have become like raman maharshi don't go into this particular thing there are a whole lot of thing that needs to be done for you to understand for you to reach to that level where you can actually practice who am i when you can actually practice self contemplation or asking questions to yourself there's a certain level to achieve So just thinking, just just you know, closing your eyes and uh, doing meditation will lead you nowhere. A particular set of food, a particular set of work. There's a mechanism. That's why it is known as tantra. In Kundalini, chakras, all this come into tantra. Tantra is the functional part of Veda. Tantra is the mechanism. So how do you reach? How do you apply that mechanism? it pushes your soul up to the level of anahat or manipur so that you can go through the gyan marg you can go through the marg of contemplation is a real spiritual day and other than that if you don't know about these things and you talk about you know i live in this world but i am not affected by this world then what to say there's a saying that in the assembly of a debate where foolish people are participating the knowledgeable one will remain quiet and will say that you are right you people are right because you cannot debate with the fool or you cannot debate with someone who have not experienced who the one who have never ate a mango you cannot explain to him how a mango feels right that's why spirituality is told as gunge ka gud right jaggery of a of someone who cannot talk so if someone who cannot talk who cannot speak if he eats up something sweet he cannot describe you how it feels right so spirituality is a whole lot of practice practice related to food and many kriyas and multiple things and after that your soul reaches a particular level and after reaching to that particular level you will be in the position to actually contemplate on something or think about something is the thing that i wanted this is the crux of spirituality is what i wanted to tell you today this just a small spiritual part that i wanted to to discuss about today if you think that i should continue with the spiritual series you can just like you know like drop a comment below if you want me to continue with it because of course this is not a spirituality channel it is an astrology channel but still if you want me to continue with this just drop me a comment so that i know that people are liking it hmm. of course the videos are made for you to like uh, that there is a public video though i don't need an audience i have a whole lot of students Oh my love a lot. Right. This is the thing. There's a very vague misunderstanding that Ketu is for spirituality. Once again, this comes from lack of understanding. Like you know, people don't understand spirituality, but practice of spirituality, talk about spirituality, as I have told you. In the same way, people don't read classics. and then 
they start practicing astrology they have no knowledge of classics and then they start practicing astrology and to hide their ignorance they will tell themselves a scientific astrologer or modern astrologer or whatever i have like came across many people who pose themselves as you know scientific astrologer who don't believe in what is written in classics they use their mind and logic and all these you know scientific astrologer is giving a simple example scientific astrologer giving you an scientific astrologer will talk the ascendant of d9 the ascendant of d3 the ascendant of d16 i ask you a question tell me the formula how time can be divided by space it is talking it is like saying 1 km distance is covered in 20 minutes this is not true it depends on the speed of the vehicle right so what is the formula to divide time in space if any scientific astrologer can enlighten me then i think they should not study classics they are apt enough to go by their opinion if you cannot explain to it you should read classics it is pretty clear that there is no ascendant on individual charts but for them you should be able to read classics and understand it not read translations but read classics and the best way of reading best way of learning astrology to learn it from a bona fide and authentic guru because the text the books vara mehra wrote they had jatak for his student who will you know what happened in earlier times is vara mehra was an astrologer in avanti and his students they cannot practice in avanti because the king's astrologer is their guru and they cannot practice in front of their guru of course so they will go to different areas of world to practice and in earlier times there were no mobile phone no telegram no whatsapp no email so vara meher taught their students for some you know like 12 13 14 15 years and after that he will give him his book he will give them his book rejar and he will tell them that if ever you have a problem in your practice refer to the book So the book is for reference. It is for the written notes. But Vara Meher wrote the book for his students and for his fellow astrologers, and he wrote way back then. It was a great understanding of Jyotish back then, which all got destroyed by this Mughal invasion and Englishmen. They have all been destroyed. If it was an intact tradition, the real knowledge must have been there. But first of all, the knowledge is broken, and another thing is. Rehat Jatak was written by Vara Meher to by for his students, and only his students will be able to follow. You will not be able to follow. That is the reason you should learn astrology from a bona fide authentic guru to a guru from a guru who learned Rehat Jatak from his guru, because his guru learned from his guru, and his guru's guru learned from his guru. So the bona fide tradition tells you the truth. Other than that, everything is very very wrong. so ketu related to spirituality as i i don't think it is i am yet to find a shloka i believe in shlokas right i don't take any scientific thought of any modern astrologer for the obvious reason that i just told you so i am yet to find the karakatwa of ketu listed as a spirituality in a shloka ketu adhyatma karaka hai this word i am yet to see from my eyes i haven't seen it yet even after reading four uh, some 3000 4000 books of astrology and some more than 1500 classics of astrology i haven't found the word yet point to is when we talk of the spirituality com- when we talk of spirituality combination when we talk of moksha combination it is not only ketu who features sun also features gulika mandi also features there is a rule that if the dis- navamsha dispositor of gulik and mandi is very strong in b1 chart then one will get moksha in the gemini astrology there is a rule that if the 12th house from atmakarak is occupied by both sun and ketu then one will get moksha 
if the 12th house from the sign of atmakarak is either pisces or aquarius then one will get moksha if the lord of the 12th sign from atmakarak is exalted etc then one will get moksha if there are exalted or other powerful planets in the 12th house then one will get moksha so there are rules like this specifically ketu have ketu have specifically ketu have nothing to do with spirituality and in the way to explain that i think i have told you enough combinations for moksha i think right yeah and these moksha combinations when present in the horoscope will also tell that the person will tread on the spiritual path that the person will go in the spiritual path that the person will follow the spiritual path this tells us that hmm but i have specifically seen one one thing that libra the sign libra is known as dev brahman pujita libra is the sign who worships devata and brahman and if ketu is situated in libra if it is a male chart then the person is very staunchly devoted to worship of god either directly or indirectly and if it is a female chart then the help of god the support of god the involvement of god in her life happens very often the blessings of sages and sadhus in her life happen very often but other than moksha there are many more combinations for spirituality but there is something that needs to be understood astrology will tell you things that can be achieved astrology deals about luck if you have a strong 11th lord second lord if you have a good dhan yoga you will achieve money without much hard work but in spirituality this thing is not there no one can be a drunkard and can become a paramhansa at the same time either he being a drunkard is a false news or he have he is a paramhansa is a false news both things cannot happen together so spirituality is something that you have to achieve there can be no combination about it if you understand it in the right way moksha is something that you have to achieve by deciding that i want to achieve it it is not that thing which will automatically come that's why to see it from the horoscope is not that god it's not recommended but still remember that i have told you multiple combinations and these combinations you will see in the chart of great sevens like ramkrishna paramhans is having an exalted mars in the 12th house moksha combination just the the one that i just told right exalted planet connected to the exalted or strong planet connected to the 12th house a strong planet is good progress in spirituality exalted planet moksha is connected to the 12th house directly indirectly is indirect moksha that happens in multiple lives indirect moksha is just uh, that after death the soul will rest for many years but have to but it is it is no moksha at all the 12th sign from the atmakarak is having sun and ketu both the 12th uh, sign from the atmakarak in uh, atmakarak in navamsha having pisces or aquarius the 12th sign from the atmakarak in navamsha the lord of the 12th sign from atmakarak in navamsha being strong the dispositor of mandi being strong in d1 are few of the combinations for moksha and check the horoscope of ramana maharshi paramhansa yogananda ramkrishna paramhansa and many people you will find it working right but spirituality devotion doing a lot of uh, pujas yagyas getting involved in a lot of karmakand all these things are different i will do another video on it right what are the combination for you know like as an example i told you about libra right libra is dev brahman pujita so someone having strong planets in libra point 1 someone having venus strong point 2 or someone having 
yeah these two things someone having very strong planets in libra someone having the lord of libra venus is strong in the chart is a dev brahman pujita they will spend a good amount of money on worship they will spend a good amount of money in pujas and karma kands right the same thing happens when jupiter is connected to the 12th house a whole lot of expenditure is spending of money loss of money is generally related to the person loses his money or gives away his money to people related to jupiter that will be temple priests etc so these are two of the combinations when the person does a whole lot of yagyas humas and these things that is different from spirituality that needs to be understood and as i told spirituality is a huge huge concept but for us humans for us normal beings what you should do is you should check the dispositor or the rashi lord of the ascendant moon and sun and sun tells you what your pitrus want from you moon tells you what gods want from you and ascendant tells you what rishi wants from you so whichever house ascendant lord is situated you have to work like education education from rishis because sages want the knowledge to continue the knowledge to flow the knowledge to get experimented tested right so whichever house lagna lord is situated the knowledge of that area you have to contribute so if the lagna lord is in the lagna you have to contribute on the knowledge of the self if the lagna lord is in the ninth house like it is for ram krishna paramahans he have to contribute in the knowledge of religion spirituality the ninth house i take libra lagna for ramana maharshi which is having venus in the lagna itself lagna lord in lagna itself he have to spread the knowledge about self who am i if i remember correct paramhans yogananda is having lagna lord in the fifth house so right autobiography of a yogi fifth house is direct knowledge so giving knowledge of kriya yoga giving knowledge through his books he have a very good commentary in bhagavad gita as well this is what the sages want from you what your pitrus want from you is the rashi lord of sun a few charts that i can collect someone having sun in pisces the rashi lord of the jupiter is situated in the 10th house uh, uh, sorry the jupiter is situated in the 4th house pitrus want you to make property pitrus want you to take care of your mother the sign lord of sun situated in the ascendant pitrus want you to become famous pitrus want you to be intelligent of course you are not being being that thing you know that's why they want so the dispositor of sun also indicates what you are not doing that's why they want for normal people so if the dispositor of sun is in the 11th house you are not interested in making money that is a repercussion because why see the pitrus are the elders and why your elders want you to do something they will not want you to do something that you are already doing they will only advise you to do something that you are not doing so if the dispositor of the sun is in the 11th house make money is what pitrus want from you such people are very successful in making money also because pitrus support is there if they remember their pitrus if they make their pitrus happy it will help them achieve money because pitrus want it to happen the lord of the sun sign in the 11th house pitrus want you to make money the lord of the sun sign in the ascendant pitrus want you to have name fame and good personality pitrus want your intelligence to be right the dispositor of sun in the 4th house the pitrus want you to take care of mother make home property purchase vehicle the Lord of the Sun sign in the seventh house, Petrus wants you to get married. The Lord of the Sun sign in the fifth house, Petrus wants you to grow his children, write books, teach people, have students, and there were enough. Is the dispositor of Moon. What you should do to appease gods is told by the dispositor of Moon. So if the dispositor of Moon is in the sixth house. 
destroy the enemy and the bad people who spread misinformation about gods or spirituality or thing other things like that be a torch bearer if the dispositor of moon is in the sixth house if the dispositor of moon is in the ninth house then worship god by going to temple by doing yajna homas pujas etc if the dispositor of moon is in the fourth house then god wants you to donate some land for a temple god wants you to donate some money or some brick to make his temple the fourth house is home fourth house is property god wants you to donate one of your vehicle to a temple this is what god wants from you this is the way to appease the god and i will tell you i have one very strong formula that one should always worship i have a very strong formula i will tell you that one should always worship the god indicated by the lord in whose sign moon is situated so if moon is situated in mars hanuman ji and bhairav don't forget moon in taurus devi don't forget moon in gemini vishnu don't forget moon in cancer devi the mother aspect of devi don't forget moon in leo through leo is having magha which is the home of pitrus leo indicates the truth or pitrus moon in virgo worship river goddess like narmada etc or worship virgin virgin devi like kanyakumari etc this is moon in virgo moon in libra worship mahalakshmi don't forget mahalakshmi moon in scorpio female aggressive devi like kali etc moon in sagittarius vishnu moon in capricorn either ganga or great spiritual saints or great warrior gods like skanda murugan moon in aquarius self contemplation meditation and gods shrouded in shrouded with a lot of you know like fearful stories like bhairav kaliyamma and moon in pisces go with vishnu moon in pisces be a staunch devotee of some tirtha moon in pisces visit dwarga every year moon in pisces visit jagannath puri every year be a staunch devotee of some tirtha this is a huge topic as i told you but everything have to have a have an end and you know about me right i can keep on talking and talking and talking and talking about hours but what to do everything will start will vanish will grow will perish right thank you for watching the video namaskar